All right, welcome guys um, to another episode of Frontline to Fairway. Uh, this time we are introducing March for Mulligans. Um, we are joined by three um, guys here, OCF member Del Sullivan and with his two former colleagues uh, from Royal Anglian, uh, Mick Abs and Richard Jones. Um, I'm not gonna say anything else. Uh, to begin with, um, let's meet them or let's hear from them. We're going to start with Mick. Uh, Mick, would you like to? Sure. Hi, Jim. My name's uh, Mick Abs, and I served with Two All Anglian, the poachers from 1977 to 2011, um, in which time I served in Northern Ireland many times, Bosnia uh, and Iraq. Um, my sh short story is uh, often during my service, I felt how lucky I was to escape relatively unscathed while close friends and colleagues have been seriously hurt or worse. Um, it was only when I was working at the, the Open Golf a few years back that I became aware of the On Course Foundation uh, as they were visiting the event. Uh, until then, I hadn't really known uh, who they were or what they'd done. Um, just after I left the army, um, I met Del Sullivan at a regimental golf day and realized um, that he lived around the corner from where I worked in Norwich. And it was around that time that uh, he was going through sort of a series of, I suppose, difficult and painful operations uh, on his back. And that's when I saw at first hand the help and the support that he and his family received from the On Course Foundation and how much of the camaraderie of the OCF and what it meant to him in aiding his recovery. Um, in this last year, participating in many of the, the Zoom meetings with the OCF beneficiaries online uh, has also enabled me to build a, a better picture uh, of the personalities and individual challenges that they all endure. And then when Dell told me of his plan to raise funds again this year, um, I'm really honoured to be asked to assist in the planning and the execution of what is known now as March for Mulligans. Uh, as the very least, I thought I could do to help raise funds for such a fantastic and worthy cause. Oh, that's great, Mick. Um, Richard, would you yeah. like to share your... Yeah, cool. So... The only person who ever called me Richard is my mum, and hopefully she's not in the room here. So. <laughs> my name is uh, Jonah Jones. Uh, I'm with Dell in the 1st Battalion, the Royal Anglian Regiment. Served for 29 years. I'm still serving now. Uh, I've been in the reserves now, the 3rd Battalion, the Steelbacks, for uh, six years. Uh, I've served in all different sorts of places, Northern Ireland, Bosnia, Afghanistan. Um, and like I said now, yeah, uh, still serving now within the Steelbacks. Um, you know, I've seen firsthand uh, the amazing work that this charity does, you know, uh, and still do it um, now. You know, myself, uh, I've been invited to a couple of the charity days uh, and played golf with some of the people there. And there's some of the salty of uh, earth people that you'll ever meet. Uh, very funny, you know, in all situations that they get themselves in. You know, for me, um, I've also uh, helped out with other charities which do just as amazing work like you guys, is the Battle Back program as well. So this is why I want to jump in on this um, to help people get back into playing some sort of level of sport and stuff like that, you know, and find new challenges. Because for me, the charity itself, it embodies all what the military stands for, you know, and golf for them will create, you know, new challenges, you know, from different from what they've uh, found when they were serving or veterans as well. Oh, thank you, Richard. Cheers. Here you go, Mr. Del Sullivan. Thank you very much, G. Thank you, Rich, Jonah, Mick. Uh, so, my name's Del Sullivan. Uh, I joined the Army in 1999. I uh, joined the first time Royal Anglian Regiment, the Vikings, and I was medically discharged in 2016. Um, after doing four tours of Afghanistan, one tour of Iraq, and I actually joined uh, when I was based in Northern Ireland when I first joined. Uh, so I'll go on to tell you a little bit about my story, how I've become involved with the OCF. Uh, my journey 
towards, I always put my journey back to 2010 after Hurricane 11. Um, I'd already been injured at this time. I'd had multiple surgeries already. But it was when I got back from that tour where, to be honest, I didn't really think about it until I started writing what I was going to talk about on this, that the impact it actually did have on me that tour. Um, there's stuff I've not I've known you probably finding out for the first time tonight. I mentally wasn't in a great place. My career spiralled, drinking way too much. Um, I've got in trouble. I got busted because I was... I was just out of control. Just, it wasn't a great person at the time. Um, lost contact with a lot of family. Jonah knows firsthand. He bowed me out numerous occasions on Monday. I was just not a good person. Um, I, I put it down to one lad passing away. It was Captain Driver on that tour. And um, I was fortunate with other tours. But I say fortunate. I had other friends that had passed away. But I was lucky enough to be at home during their funeral. So I could say my goodbyes to them where with Captain yeah. Dry, I never got the closure, never got to, to say goodbye to someone. I spent four months on Eric 11 within a cave, just me and him. So that affected me. Um, and then I was lucky to be fair. I met Naomi on a, just an off chance night out. Um, and that kind of got me back on track mentally, but I kind of, this is how much I didn't like who I was. I lied to Naomi about so much about me and who I was because I, I was ashamed of who I'd become. You know, uh, we had a child pretty early on in our relationship and that completely sorted me out mentally. I was back on track. Uh, Noah, our, our eldest, was born in 2012. We then got married. Everything was going smoothly. And we had Bo, my youngest, in 2014. So I settled down, I was still serving in the army at the time. I'd had all my rehabs, things were going great again. I was back, I had some kind of army career, not the career I wanted because the injuries wouldn't allow me to. But uh, unfortunately in 2015, just on a normal run, the metal work I had in my spine gave up on me. One of them, one of the bolts bent, resulted in me having to have my surgery, final surgery to this date in 2016. And that's when things got really bad medically, more physically than the mental side of things then um mentally it affects me because the surgery didn't allow me to be the father i wanted to be couldn't look after my children how i wanted to if they cried i couldn't pick them up i couldn't play with them it was um uh you know it was tough no it was four at the time it's helping me get dressed in the morning um i don't really talk about it the closest people to me won't know what I go through day in, day out. Even now, it's medication. I joke it off because that's what we do. But I was lucky on Course Foundation found me um, middle 2016 in Colchester. I think I bumped into Mark. He was the first person I bumped into. And um, I, OCF couldn't wish for a better front personnel staff. Mark, Will, yourself, G, the professionals are just most unbelievable people you'll ever meet in your life. They changed my life. They changed Naomi's life. She might not know it at the time because at the time she probably thought I was just swanning off playing golf because I didn't tell her the true impact it was actually having on me mentally, just getting out, meeting people. Meeting people, I, I, I you know, mentally you get in your head, the doctors, surgeons say, oh, you won't play golf again. So you think you won't. It's not till you go to a free day event and see yourself, G, uh, yeah. you playing golf and you think yeah, G can definitely. do it. If G can do it, I can do it with a bad back. You know I mean? <laughs> That's the way I thought about things. And that was it. Um, my life's just gone on. And I think the OC OCF was a journey. And I think it's done that journey for me. It's got me at my worst. And it's got me where I am now. Working, got me in a job at Barnum Broom Hotel. I'm playing golf. And now it's my turn to help others that was in the same situation as me. That's that's great, Dal. No, that's great. Um um sorry to um, interrupt but we forgot to introduce mark uh was with, was with us now he's a friend of mine anyway <laughs> yeah yeah um he's obviously everyone knows mark he was our guest in the last time out in frontline fairway um and mark would you like to ask some few questions to del yeah del I, I did want to ask you if you could just maybe cover how the charities helped you just in a little bit more detail not 
you know, not, not too long, but just a little bit more about the things you've done over the last few years. So within the four, to be fair, uh, to say, I'm not going to say the charity saved my life because that would be, it saved, certainly saved many of people's lives that I've spoke to. I had my family that was always, I had, but it changed my life in ways that no one could understand. Um, I didn't know where I was going at the time. Didn't know my future. Um, I'd never known anything other than the army. So when I got out and you lose, people say, oh, if you, you're in the army, they're your friends for life. It's not always true. They've got, they're so busy that they've, you, you've forgotten about. And I don't blame the army for that. The yeah. army goes on. They're, they're yeah. all over the place. So having the OCF gave me that army sort of family again. So it was all military personnel. There's even people that I'd served with injured in my regiment with the OCF. So I had that click with certain people instantly. And just like yourself, Mark, it was, there weren't a week go by that we weren't in contact. You were talking to me. The OCF were pushing out. There's job opportunities for everyone. And the first people I spoke to when I said there was a job up at Barnum Broom, you were there, Mark. We were there down there. I think you handed my CV in for me. And, and that's what... Right, <laughs> yeah. And, and they've not thanked you ever since. <laughs> but that's what it does. It, tra it changes people's lives for the better. Yes, yeah. True. That's true. Um... Yeah, I mean, Del, I, I just, G, just before you go on, um, I, I will say, and I said it quite a lot, make a joke, you probably back me up on this. Guys don't always see the changes in themselves over a period of time. We see it because we see them at the start point and we see them make this journey through and the changes that they are. So you guys will have seen it because you've known Dell for a few years. But, you know, the difference in where you were back in 16 to where you are now is quite significant. I, I don't think there's any question about that. Oh, it's unbelievable, completely. Yeah, no, yeah I saw it firsthand. The before Dell got to know the OCF and stuff like that, just you know, when he was in his dark places and stuff, just me grabbing him and taking him to the driving range, you know, just, you know, with me and him going to Top Golf nearly every single week, you know, just going there, just, you know, the total different person in him once he's there, with a club in his hand, you know, and that's how golf can change all these people, you know, for the better that is as well. We, we used to avoid each other on the tee <laughs> back a few years ago. <coughs> Whenever we were together on the tee, we would both make a complete hash and remember at the Oxfordshire so yeah. so Mark Mark actually cost me a place in the Simpson Cup <laughs> <laughs> he told me about that as well <laughs> yeah 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 um G, do you want to move on to the to the next bit uh yeah we I, I think I think we're going to go to the main topic now uh for Marshall Mulligan so Dell, would you like to explain what, what is a March for Mulligan? Of course, yeah. So March for Mulligans. It uh, took us a while to think of a name, to be fair. Me, Mark and Mick were like, I'm in an R and I was on one of my random walks. I think between me and Mick, we got the name. I mentioned Mulligans and walking and we got the March for Mulligans. So we were originally going to walk from Royal Burke down Liverpool and finish in Norwich at uh, Barnum Brunwell Work. Obviously, with COVID restrictions, we had to change. Uh, I think we only changed about four weeks ago. We went four weeks ago. We went to confirm yeah. on this. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mix planned the route um, around Norfolk, so seven marathons, seven days. It's going to be tough, but I couldn't think of two better people to be sharing a week with. Um, Jonah and Mick who have been there for me, um, and hopefully, we raise as much funds as we can for other members of the OCF. I don't. I used to do these sort of events selfishly for myself to give myself something to do. But I'm in a place now where I feel like I can do it for other people to hmm. recover like me. Yeah. What's, what's the background on marathons? Why, why marathons? Uh, I'll tell you what it was. It's because, so I've run the, uh, I'll say run, I shuffled the London Marathon in 2008. <laughs> 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 and uh, I think it was lockdown one I was due to do the London Marathon again last year and I said to Naomi I can't do it I want to do something on that day so I said how about if I shave my hair to 2.6 she was having none of it and then <laughs> on the Friday I thought why don't I just walk a marathon then instead so I, and so I walked it and it was about a week after I see 
I just swear I must have seen something on social media about it. And then I just thought, how about we walk seven and seven? Can't be that hard. I've regretted it ever since mentioning it to Mick, if I'm being honest. So <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Don't> have I. <laughs> that, it's it's got to be quite hard, but it's challenging as well for you as well, Delar, I think. I honestly, it's, I think it's the first thing in my life that I'm taking on that's 50-50, if I complete. I normally, like, I normally stick to 70-30 sort of odds, but this is definitely a 50-50. But I think between the three of us, we'll get through it. Can't promise what time, but no matter what, we'll walk seven marathons in seven days. So, what kind of preparation are you doing, kind of thing? Three of you, to, uh, obviously, because of the restriction and everything. Are you doing anything? To, oh, just walking on the treadmill? No, I think. Um, well, for me, what I'm sort of certainly with the local area, you know, with with the restrictions, you're, clearly you can go out on your own, and I think that goes for all three of us that. Um, um, you know, we can just get out and walk the normal, um, the lanes and the and the sort of country roads around here. Um, it is it is tedious doing it on your own. I mean, however long distance runners do, I just don't know. But but they do it um, a lot quicker, mate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <I know. laughs> when you when you're trying to cover a few you know a few miles and it's three or four hours, you know, there's only so many podcasts you can listen to, but. Um, that's what we've sort of done so far, and so hopefully we can sort of start, um, you know, getting getting out and well, once the event starts, thankfully we've got some um, we've got some other, you know, we've got some other people to talk to, other than Dell. Yeah, it's been a it's been so I I'm quite fortunate I've got a training partner here as well, local to me, so we can go out in our pairs. Uh, Mick comes over once a week, so we go out with me and Mick do a long one once a week, seventeen miles I think we're up to now. Yeah. Um, Jonah's on his own, bless him. So he's a. Uh, I wish I was on Sunday. <laughs> um, but training's going all, well. But I don't think you can prepare for this because at the moment I walk 17 miles and I'm not in great shape the next day. So I can't go out for a long one. So they, uh, it's going to be a complete new experience when we start it. Mick, Jonah, just a question for you two guys, really. Um, you touched on the start about why you're supportive of Dell and, and doing this, but it, it still takes quite a bit of motivation to get behind doing something like this with the planning as well as the actual participation in it. Is, is there something in particular that, that really has motivated you to do that? I think it was just actually meeting the guys. You know, I come to a couple of charity events. It's actually meeting the people that, you know, this is going to help and knowing that, you know, that that one thing that we're going to do for that seven days, you know, it, it is going to have, you know, repercussions on someone's life. You know, I think that if you think about that and, you know, it, that will get us through those seven days easy. Just thinking about that. Yeah. So I, I think I said, in, you know, in, in my part, that the, the beginning that, um, you know, you're lucky, you think about it and you get away with all sorts of, and, and, and thankfully, and I, I say that, you, you know, after, after a long career that, 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 we are where we are, but it's just the support and seeing, as as, as Jonah says, at, at the golf events that we've, or the minimal ones that I've been to when we had a um, couple of guys there, um, it's it's inspirational, inspirational. So that's really the only word you can use. Um, and so, you know, again, what we what we were doing, as Dell says, in the dark in the dark hours, especially when we're getting towards the end. When for some reason Dell wants to start at some undarfly hour, <laughs> three o'clock in the morning probably won't be um, quite as good. But um, yeah, it, it's it's we'll get through it because we know that what we're doing um, is both raising money and highlighting the great work of the On Course Foundation throughout. Yeah, that's, that's great. This is for Dell. So how, like as Mick said, how can actually people can support and get behind this? Um, well, there's a few. So we've got a Just Giver page, um, March okay. for Mulligans. Um, yeah. uh, we also have a uh, Facebook page, which more than merit to uh, join mm -hmm. that. And that will have all our story of, we're going to post videos throughout the week. Uh, I'll sneak into Jonah's room one morning and film him trying to get out of bed. <laughs> I'll put <laughs> 
<laughs> Social media will be, uh, Facebook will be the, the main video content of the week itself. Yeah. And that's also called uh, March for Mulligans. The names, the name sounds great though. I think this just name when the mark told me about this. It's, the name name sounds great. It just it just clicked. It's, it, for golfers, they understand it. The mulligan it means second chance. Uh, we have to explain. Yeah. yeah, and we uh, we have to explain that to people that don't play golf what mulligan means. But once we've explained it, they all say the same. It's brilliant. Second, that's what we've all every member of the OCF has been given that second chance. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Mark? Well, I, I was just going to say, um, firstly, I think on behalf of the staff at the charity and, and all the other beneficiaries that are out there, um, thank you, first of all. Yeah, definitely. For the effort of the week that you're going to put in, but also the preparation, because I know the preparation, you, you know, you guys have all been doing. Um, I see it every day on the chat group. Um, so thank you, firstly, on behalf of everybody. And I think, secondly, good luck. <laughs> <Need it. laughs> that, that, that's what he need <laughs> good luck with the weather good luck with putting up for him with him all day for yeah. Yeah. is that Mick or me? you no. <laughs> it'll be a great you haven't you, mentioned yeah. I was just going to say Mick it's, an, it's a fantastic challenge it'll be hard work um, but I'm sure at the end of it having done a couple of sort of challenge things myself at the end of it you will feel duly rewarded for the efforts that you've put in yeah 100% Right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. This, this, this great. It's going to be a great, you know, great, I think, great challenge for you guys as well. And plus, it's a great effort. And um, yeah, as Mark said, thank you very much for what you're doing for us, you know, for OCF and for all the members. Um, no, you know, like obviously, thank, thank you guys for your support as well. You know, obviously, Mark, with you guiding us in the right direction, how best to do things, because obviously you've done all this before, you know. You know, never when we not we put a question on the group, you're always there with the, the sensible answer because I was free <laughs> in tears, don't come up with the best one. <laughs> no, but thank, thanks for the OCF as well. Yeah, that's that's great. Yeah, hopefully we can, um, um I can join you on the last day, I think. On yeah, a you can where, our yeah. golf with us, G. Yeah, on the last day. That would be great, yeah. Look forward to seeing you, buddy. Yeah. Hey, make sure he walks up. A little bit as well. Don't let him. No, no, no buggies allowed. He's walking the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, um, guys. We appreciate it. Yeah. Now, thank you very much, guys. Okay. Um, welcome, guys, again. Um, we have um, Dal's wife with us, and Naomi, um, who's going to share, uh, she, she's going to give us a small talk. And Mark, would you like to ask a few questions? Yeah. Naomi, how are you? I'm good, thanks. <laughs> good. Good. <laughs> um, we've obviously spoke to the guys about March Mulligans and why they're doing it. Um, it's, it's quite a significant undertaking, particularly for Dell. Um, so we just wanted to ask you a couple of questions about um, the impact, really, that things have had on you and the children since Dell's final surgery, really. We've, we know about his injury, so it's really about the impact that it's had on you and the children. I think for me, um, meeting my husband when he was not fully fit but he was able he was fine we were able to you know go off and do things um and then him having the surgery and then him and it wasn't just you might not play golf again it was you might not walk again so it was you know he was the one that went out and worked I was home with the children I moved around wherever we went you know so that was a massive worry one that he was going to be you know, unable to walk, what were we going to do? Two, oh my God, you know, I'm at home with children. Who's going to work? Who's going to, you know, pay our bills kind of thing. Um, so that was a massive worry. And I think that I didn't 
really realise how injured he was. And I thought it was going to be fine and he'd just get up and he'd be, you know, it would be over with. It wasn't until we turned our dining room into a bedroom for him that I realised, actually, I don't know how this is going to go. And for the children, you can imagine, you know, when they're young, they've got a trampoline in the garden, they want to play football, they want to jump on the trampoline, they want to, um, they want to do everything, but daddy can't do it because daddy's in bed. Daddy can't, you know, want to go out for a walk with the dog. Well, we can't because daddy can't move. Daddy, you know, and even I think as he got a bit better, it was still a challenge for him. So I think it totally flipped everything on its head for us as a family, you know, for the boys. They didn't quite understand it. And like I say, Del made it a bit of a game that Noah would help put his socks on in the morning. But it wasn't a game because Del couldn't put his socks on on the morning. But Noah didn't know that. So it was trying to find ways to keep the boys kind of involved with daddy but not jumping on top of daddy um and I think that was tough for them I think that was really tough for them why can't daddy come and play football why can't daddy wrestle around on the floor and mummy wasn't going to do that so not what mummies do <laughs> you know because I was also I my time was taken away looking after Dell because after that first lot of surgery he was bed bound for a while so it was me trying to juggle him the children and at that time I had started a weekend job to try and bring some money in as well so it was really it just completely flipped our lives upside down and, and when when did you start to see things start to improve I think when he started going off and yeah I did just think he was going off and playing golf all the time <laughs> and he used to drive me crazy because I'd be like you know I can't have a hobby because his hobby was taking over. And at the time I was quite bitter about it, but through seeing how he changed, because he was a bit of a broken man, he was a bit disconnected from everything. Um, he certainly wasn't the man that I had met. Um, he certainly wasn't the man that I'd married. He was very, um, unless it involved golf, he didn't really want to talk to me about anything really, which, at the time was really sad for me however you know he continued going to these golf events and charity days and, and things and he'd come home and he'd there'd just be that little glimmer of Dell back again the Dell that I met the Dell that I married um and I felt like he was miserable when he wasn't able to play golf he, he'd lost being a soldier he'd lost being able to walk he'd lost being able to play with his children He'd pretty much lost a lot of things. Um, so to then start see that side of him creeping in because of the golf and him going to all these different days where I guess he was with like-minded people, people that knew exactly how it felt. I didn't know how it felt. I genuinely was quite annoyed that he was just going off on a jolly all the time. And I couldn't do that because I'm at home with the children. We can't both have a hobby. So, I, you know, I thought he was being really selfish. However, turns out he wasn't being, he was being selfish, but he was being selfish because he needed to be selfish. He needed to sort himself out. Um, he needed to fix his mental health. And at that time, I was the stronger of the two. And I had the boys to, you know, protect and look after. And, and yeah, and I, I saw a huge, a huge difference. Just every time he came home from something, there would just be a little bit more. And it, and it was almost like all these society days and things were just chipping, chipping away at this, you know, this shell that surrounded and consumed my husband and made him not my husband. So yeah, it, it had such an impact, positive impact. I couldn't see that at the time, but I see that more now. Yeah, yeah. Is as, the, as you sort of went through those changes physically and mentally, um, how did the boys react to that? Did they, did they see that when they started to get daddy back and you could start? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Because we were able to go off and do things. We were able to um, go for a bit of, go on a dog walk. He didn't need his walking stick. Um, he would play with them in the garden a little bit more. He wouldn't, couldn't jump on the trampoline, but he would lay on the trampoline and they would like lay on the trampoline and, and just change it into a different game. 
Um, and I think that, again, as, as those, every time he came home and those cracks, you know, became, he was more interested in the children because at one point I genuinely, hand on my heart, don't think he was interested in me or the children. I don't. It felt that way. It certainly felt that way that he didn't care about anything apart from golf. And that was why I was very, um, I was quite sour. I've really sour grapes towards it, you know, until I started to see it. But like I say, with the boys, the different things. And then when Noah started playing golf, you know, he you could see him get more, more involved. And now he'll go out and he'll play with, you know, it's like it never really happened. The boys don't, I don't think the boys have ever questioned it. There are still obviously some limits to, he, he can't probably get on the trampoline and, and you know, I think, the last time he was sort of on his knees, sort of just bouncing. And that was good enough for the boys. So I think now they don't notice it as much because it's, I think he's got past that now. I think that he is kind of where he wants, where he wanted to be. Yeah. And, and obviously March for Mulligan, seven marathons, seven days, massive undertaking, doing lots of preparation work. Um, I guess you're supportive of him doing it, um, getting him out of the house, out your hair for a, a, a few hours as well. Yeah. <laughs> are you ready for all the aches and pains and the whinges that are going to come for the week? My water bill, <laughs> my water bill is already sky high from him coming home and having to have like four baths in the afternoon <laughs> just to relax all of his muscles. Um, no, it, it will be good. I think me and the boys are going to try and join him for some of it. Um, I'm not promising we're going to do a lot of it. <laughs> because it just won't happen and of course I work a full-time job now as well um so I'm you know working um so yeah we are gonna we are gonna try we are being supportive we're trying to raise money as well along the way where we can um but yeah we're gonna try and try and join them at some point <laughs> yeah well well I think that would be nice wouldn't it if you could with yeah. your body for, yeah. for a little bit it's, it's almost like the the, the culmination of the journey you've all come through together, haven't you? To, yeah. yeah, I think we're going to try and join yeah. him on the day that he goes around the city here yeah. in our hometown. Yeah. So, you know, our home city, sorry. So it's nice and nice and easy. It's not, you know, it's fine for the boys. It's not rough, tricky terrain for them. It's it's pavements and it's, it's walking around a city that we're used to as well for them. So it, I think it will be, yeah. And they know Mick and they know Jonah as well. So, you know, hmm. yeah. Good. Well, Naomi, thanks. Thanks for sharing your thoughts and feelings. Yeah. It's yeah. Sorry to talk about. Thank you. It's yeah. Clearly, been a difficult time as well early in the earlier days. So, thank yeah. you for sharing that. And um, again, I think we wish yeah. you family all the best going forward. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. As um, as Mark said, um, uh, as an injured soldier, uh, I know how um, families are very important part of your life during your rehab process and I think uh, he's got like a strong partner you know with uh, as you so he wouldn't agree to that yeah hats off to you <laughs> and uh, yeah definitely this is uh, where I'll jump in you don't pray yeah. too much please. <laughs> yeah definitely yeah so you needed that you know you need that um, during your rehab process you need a strong partner uh, family with you so and I would like to say good luck for your fundraising event. Whatever you're doing, that, that's that's amazing, man. What, whatever you're doing, um, you've done before as well as a marathon, and now it's it's, it's a really tough challenge for you. And I I, I, I'm, I hope you're gonna do it, and I'm, I, I bet I'm gonna bet for it. Um, <laughs> um, and good luck, and thank you, Naomi, as well. And good luck for your future. Thank you, Mark. Thank you.